one of the questions that the shamans asked is, have you ever killed someone? This person was sitting and wondering if, because they didn't want to be disallowed, but in the final analysis said, yes, yes, I was, I was in the armed services. And the shaman said, you can't, you can't do this. You don't understand what will come back to you. One of my friends was, um, came out of Iraq and um, had a number of very difficult experiences, but in the military there, the experience that he um, changed him was um, mm. performing his first kill. Oh. So, and even though in these experiences are sanctioned by the government, maybe even were considered necessary, you know, in wartime. Or heroic. Mm -hmm. It changes a person to to have that archetypal experience. It changes their soul. That and many other things were quite challenging. So individual um, was separated, you know, wound up retiring, medical retirement, and was... Um, deeply troubled, so found a community in Peru that were doing ayahuasca work. First thing that was interesting is that when they were interviewed, and there's a, in this particular organization, it was a very, very intricate interview process, and one of the questions that the shamans asked is, have you ever killed someone? Mm. And the, this person was sitting and wondering if, because they didn't want to be disallowed, but in the final analysis said, yes, yes, I was, I was in the armed services. And the shaman said, you can't, you can't do this. That you, you're, you don't understand what will come back to you mm. if oh, you wow. were to have this experience. And we don't believe that it would be good for you ultimately. So my friend was distraught and made a, good strong argument that he was stout enough and he was he was correct stout enough to have this so the shamans um consulted among themselves and said that they they would permit him to do this but on the caveat that he would have to submit to being withdrawn from the process by them at their discretion if they felt that this was going to a place that wasn't mm -hmm. going to be good. Mm -hmm. And and so he's down in Peru. Just as you said, there's this preparatory process. They uh, made him drink this volcanic water, which was this overwhelming uh, purgative <laughs> uh, substance. So it's just days of purging in the oh, body. Um, and nurses coming to check on them which was interesting, this uh, mix between the experiences. And then after that purgative wow. experience, they're taken off into the jungle, into a compound, a group of uh, perhaps 10 of them. And there's much to say. He was wonderful about um, recording all of this at the end of each day. It was a remarkable storyline. But... Um, but he was hunted in his visions, literally hunted mm. in his visions, and, wow. and feeling this um, predatory energy that each time he went into the altered state was constantly um, coming at him and for him to contain his own sense of horror over and over and over again until he could finally submit to the full sensory experience of being killed, which is the inverse mm. of the experience that he had participated in. And because the full sensory immersion in the experience, yeah. it wasn't academic, it wasn't like a virtual reality game, that sure. he experienced it in his skin, experienced his heart-stopping, experienced um, the explosion of organs uh, in, mm. in a in a sh screaming kind of psychological oh. agony. Uh, mm. At this point, the, apparently the shamans, all the shamans are around him. They're chanting, they're intervening, mm. they're doing, mm. doing the incredible work that they could do to help contain 
this experience, and, and this is very congruent with what Jung said about dream work, is that often that the self will grant us the inverse experience in order to create an uh, equanimity in the ego. That, mm-hmm. And that often happens in very subtle ways, because many of us don't live in such polarities. Yeah. And so he came out of the experience uh, um, I think, in his own words, redeemed. <laughs> that that he sorry, felt beautiful. that in some way he had suffered adequately something that the uh, individual mm. that he had killed in wartime had suffered and had still had m- several years of processing something so extraordinary but felt sure. that he wasn't sure that he would s- submit to such a thing. Mm-hmm. This was a 10-day process. Every mm-hmm. day for 10 days they went into these states, confronted over and over again by these inner um, images. The shamans felt entities that Ayahuasca mm-hmm. herself had come to mm-hmm. him and made him know and experience what he would not have been able to access. Right. Mm-hmm. The thing I have to say, much to say, but this fellow, uh, I mean, I enjoyed him very much. He was lively and creative and really appealing. But when he came back, mm. he was lovable, uh, which is very hard for me to say that there was such a, there was such mm. a vulnerable spirit that came forward that had broken free. Mm. In the ayahuasca experience, mm. oh, I see. That there I was see. this heart More of him was available. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think lovable oh. sounds like trite, but I don't mean it that way. That yeah. that it was it was possible to love him no. and be loved by him in in yeah. that agape, wonderful human embrace. And I mm. think that the um, the wound of wartime had walled him off. Uh, from the the goodness of even other people. Mm-hmm. Now, this mm-hmm. is my words. I, I don't know whether he would say quite the same thing, but mm-hmm. subjectively, that's what I felt. And so he mm-hmm. went mm-hmm. through what I suppose anybody would say is a bad trip, which goes to what you were saying, Lisa. But he he chose mm-hmm. to put himself through something. Mm-hmm. 